Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shamai Rakov and this is another segment of our Ask Dr. Rakov. It's been a few weeks since we last did this. Uh, I've been away at some meetings and on some trips uh, and it gave me some time to get some feedback and to give some thought to this whole process. Uh, I again appreciate the questions and there are a number of questions that have come in. For today's segment I'm actually going to uh, address something else and I promise you in the future I will get to those other questions. One of the things about doing something like this is that I've been surprised that people actually have been watching. Um, pleasantly surprised. Uh, but I also appreciate that with that I've gotten some feedback, very constructive feedback, and I will tell you some very honest feedback. And one of the things that uh, was told to me not too long ago by a longtime acquaintance of mine was that they were critical of, of some of the content and said that what I was doing was not very original and was not authentic and was prompting me to try to approach this from something that maybe was reflected a little bit more of my take on medicine. Um, truth is a cold slap in the face, but I think I understood what was being said and I'm going to approach it a little bit differently. I've been in the business a long time uh, and during that time you certainly do begin to uh, see the good and the bad uh, in the way we deliver health care. So maybe I'm going to um, use some examples along the way of things that I think are, are positive changes, things that are negative characteristics, um, but maybe just show what I've uh, learned in almost 30 years in the process. And um, when I was away on the trip, there were some people that I, that I met, uh, one of whom was from a medical background. And we were sitting at dinner one evening and, and a lady at our table was just talking about some frustrations she had with uh, recent visits that she had with her own physicians. And she's a very educated uh, individual, went to really great schools, Ivy League type schools, is a, um, a successful executive right now. So by no means someone who is uh, someone to be taken not seriously. And she, like many people, when she has a problem, she researches the problem and shows up at her physician's office with a list of articles that she pulled off of the internet. And she was really, you know, concerned because uniformly she was treated negatively with this. And she couldn't understand why, why her doctors were being critical of her and one even threatening to fire her if she would kept up the approach. Now at the table was a primary care physician who was actually a friend of hers or a friend of, uh, of, of someone who she knew. Um, and he said, absolutely, you people are, are the sort of people that I, sh I worry about. I shudder when I see uh, you're in my office because you just push me back. It delays me where you don't have the background. Um, it just gets in the way. It doesn't help. And he looked at me as if I agreed. I didn't say anything at the time. But I'll tell you, I, I reflected on that a lot, and I have to say that, um, that that's really a terrible, terrible mindset to have. Without going into much detail, I'll, I'll just say that uh, within the last couple of years, I had some serious medical issues myself that fortunately went very well. And I did see the medical system and apparatus from a patient's perspective. And there are a couple of things that I realized, which was that if I hadn't done certain things that doctors would be critical of, I don't think that my outcome would have been quite the same. I emphatically say this. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being informed about what's going on with you. As a matter of fact, you wouldn't be watching videos like this if you already didn't want to learn about uh, what's going on. But you are responsible no doubt about it. Nobody else can take responsibility or, or, or can care about you like you care about yourself. And the truth right now is that we are very, very fortunate that we do live in a time where information is so accessible. And that's not a bad thing. That's an extremely good thing. One of the problems that uh, we had a number of years ago when when the internet first became popular was the fact that 
information was out there and there was no way of sifting through it. And it really was uh, somewhat distracting when people would be coming in to the office with printouts from sources that were not legitimate. But we live in a different time right now. If you have a problem as serious as a cancer, you can go to the American Cancer Society. You can go to websites from all the major medical centers, Mayo Clinic, Cleveland Clinic, Morrow Sloan Kettering, etc. And they've put great thought into the content that's on their sites, as I'm putting and my partners are putting into the content that we put on our site. That's legitimate, valid information. And it's out there because we want people to avail themselves of that. When you are informed, it should not get in the way of your therapy. It should only help the therapy. If you already come in to my office knowing about the problem, that takes away a good amount of time that would have to go into introducing a problem. We therefore can have a more shared language. If I know, uh, if I hear a priori ahead of time that a, that a physician is critical of their patients who do research, I would really question whether or not that's a person you really want to be seeing. When a, I will tell you my approach when people come in with information, with web research, stacks of web research, I look at what they have. And the only thing I care about is whether it's from legitimate sources. So if I look through the stacks of information and I see they're all from legitimate sites, then the onus is on me to Turn to explain why I agree with something or why I don't agree with something. If someone comes in with a legitimate review article of a medical problem that I told them that they had or that someone told them that they had and they researched and they read this article, the same article that I should be reading, and their take on something was different than what mine would be, then I have to explain why that is. I have to be able to explain why I'm aware of it and why I differ from it. I'm afraid what happens very frequently is that physicians, in fact, don't keep up with a lot of the issues. They're busy, and when they go home, they're not really thinking about picking up the newest journal or doing research as they did maybe when they were in medical school. They have a set way of doing things, and then when someone gives them something else, they get threatened by it. There is no room when we come to people's health for allowing a person's ego or threatening their ego to play a role. I encourage in the strongest manner people to become informed about their problems and about their care. If a person, if they go to a physician and they're given a diagnosis, I absolutely think that the only thing to do is to go and to research that problem and then to come back and be able to legitimately discuss that problem with the physician. One, to make sure that you understand it, and two, to say, you told me that we have to do it this way, but why do I seem to see that the current recommendations are to do it the other way? Ladies and gentlemen, if the physician who you're seeing cannot have an intelligent conversation with you explaining why they may or may not agree with what you've said, then you're not in the right person's office. And I completely believe in that, and I will argue for that all the time. They don't expect your physician, like anybody else, to necessarily agree with what you're saying, but expect them to be informed about it and to be able to explain why they differ from it. I would then give credence to their opinion if they've proven to you that they are aware and are well-versed in it. So that's fair and that's professional and that's what you want from them. But if you get the sense that they really are not keeping up and that you've insulted a fragile ego, then don't get frustrated. Take that as a sign that you're better off going elsewhere. I hope this is of some help, just as some background. I promise you from now on, uh, our approach will be again for me to maybe interject a little bit of what I think proper care is in addition to taking on individual problems. Thank you for watching this. I'm Dr. Shama Raka from the Center for Men's and Women's Urology.